Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, it is me, Duke CT, back with you once again with some more Raw Thoughts. And the show opens up, ladies and gentlemen, with The Miz talking and like doing a little Christmas story the night before Nightmare for TLC. You have AJ Styles, you know, they all trying to, uh, like, uh, rhyme and such, and he actually said uh, his body got almost, and just... Snapped his fingers. He got a spotlight. He says, "The Miz, I'm sorry. No, no time for. Take the spotlight off." Uh, then he had, uh, then he had Morrison with his Scottish, you know, brave heart thing, which, you know, they talk and they had the whole like, uh, you know, using okay, AJ's going to use a chair, and he hits him with like fakely hit him with a chair. Um, you know, the, the, the same type of chair shot Bailey uh, pretty much you know, gives. You know, pretty much like that, and then. You, um, afterwards, you had um, Morrison uh, come in with the sword, and honestly, I've seen the, the sword action here was ten times better than what I saw uh, during my uh, viewing of Highlander: The Source. Which, yeah. By the way, link in the description of that review with me and the three black geeks. Go check that out. Anyway, Sheamus comes down and well, beats up everyone and. Heck, throws a uh, Christmas tree, you know, and uh, I think one of the announcers like, who throws a Christmas tree? I'm like, oh, Samoa Joe has that uh, <laughs> interesting history. But yeah, uh, a yeah, so it comes to AJ versus uh, Sheamus, and this was a really good match. Both guys, good chemistry. I like the fact that Sheamus is, uh, you know, you know, Sheamus has not gotten a lot of uh, love about him, you know, being in good matches and such, because he had, he could go with the best of everyone, and uh, and this whole storyline and whole this, you know, all the stuff really shows that out. I mean, yeah, I mean, since his return, man, he's been doing pretty good. And AJ Styles, well, he's, well, AJ Styles. And I like that AJ, you know, was focusing on the leg and, and such. And and the bodyguard almost, you know, they, he was about to powerbomb AJ. And he almost just, like, picks him out and says, no, we're not going to do that. I don't know how that's not a disqualification, but okay. And... AJ, you know, picks up the victory, uh, thanks to, uh, you know, I think almost helped out again, and he picked up the victory, but then, well, they weren't done with Sheamus, as he just bashed his leg over and over, and then they just destroyed him, and, and no Drew McIntyre. Some friend, Sheamus, I can't wait for that feud, because I think two big men, big men slapping beat. <laughs> That's going to be a fun thing. So that's going to be great. And anyway, the next segment, you have to hurt business, pretty much being high school bullies, being up some stage hand. You know, you know like after the stage hand, it's like, oh, I'm just like, oh, dude, I'm just getting uh, uh, some bro nuts and celebrate and, and getting the uh, riddle uh, uh, merch and such. But no, you know, Bobby likes to, you know what you need that? Some milk. And that was it. Like, yeah. Yeah, so pretty much high school bullies. And then uh, the uh, interviewer comes in and says, uh, you know, talks about what Riddle and MVP match later on tonight. It's just going to, you know, take him out because, you know, that's what we do, hair business and such. And, and that's what it is. And anyway, uh, we get, and, it, and also MVP is saying, why don't you talk about the other people in the hurt business as they're going to be in the sixth man. You got Cedric, Shelton, and Bobby Lashley, so, and you're like, you know what, you know, why aren't you talking about them and that six-man tag, which is next? And I like the fact that, um, you know, Riddle, which, honestly, he does really good with those segments and such. And Riddle, when, um, you know, he does have that charisma. And him and New Day and uh, Jeff Hardy. And now, I think the Riddle Bros might be actually a thing. The Riddle Bros and... and well, looks like they're gonna be a tag team. So huzzah! Another tag team! Yay! And yeah, the six man match was uh fun and exciting. Xavier Woods, uh, you know, was it yeah, exactly. The New Day and uh Jeff Har uh Jeff Hardy taking on uh, S uh Subject Alexander, Selton Benjamin, and Bobby Lashley <clears throat> Bobby Lashley in a six man tag team match. And let me tell you, it was a fun match. I like uh, Alexander did a little like you know pushing everyone's out like he's being more aggressive. Uh, is this gonna make him go a little more rogue, which would be interesting. But you know 
Maybe he's like that pit bull that goes a little too heavy and such for, you know, MVP. I don't know, but it looks interesting. And Xavier Woods' trumpet skills are still on point, and I still, they're great. And at the end of the day, um, you know, the Hurt Business win. Fun six-man tag, I already said it, but, but yeah, it was fun with the, uh, the Hurt Lock, with Jeff Hardy, and that was pretty much it. Even though Riddle was at ringside, they didn't, Riddle didn't, uh, MVP didn't really face off yet, so yeah. Next up, Lana getting a pep talk before the match. Of course, her and versus Nia Jax. It was short, but in a surprise twist, Lana beats N- Nia clean as a sheet. After, uh, after Nia goes to the top rope and they did a nice little kick, like a little kick, and bam, she goes for the pin and wins. And then uh, uh, Blazer, Sally Blazer, comes out. Uh, first off, takes out. Um, Asuka, who was cheering on Lana, and they just basically just completely destroy Lana, uh, just injuring her leg. So it looks like the the villains, uh, um, Naya and uh, and Sa- Sonya Blazer, the women tag champions, stand tall. You know, even though uh, Asuka tried to save uh, Lana, but it was too late. Lana's injury. She is out for TLC, so Oscar needs to find a partner, which is a shame. But that means maybe, just maybe, Lana for the Royal Rumble? Who knows? Anyway, next up, we have Elias segment, who now has a roadie. Um, cool. Uh, Jackson Riker, you know, one of the members of the Forgotten Sons. I didn't even care for him when they were NXT, and I didn't care for him for NXT when they went to SmackDown, and I still don't care for him now. I didn't care for him when he was Gunner Eater. And then our truth came in, saying he's not an interrupter, and he says, Elias, like, you're interrupting now. So he just sat there, and then everybody, the, the gaggle of the gaggle of jobbers running around and, you know, trying to get our 24-7 championship, and Jack, and uh, then uh, Riker comes in and Takes out most of the uh, the group following our truth, so he gets a reprieve of tonight. Yay! Then you have Keith Lee flipping coins backstage. I mean, first you got Riddle and you know and uh, Keith Lee. They're, they're trying to make a a cra- WWE trying to make a crappy versions of Batman's Rogues Gallery. I don't know why is he flipping coins? Why is he doing this stuff? Saying heads like to Miz and Morrison. I'm like, why? Like you both win, and he just looks like, what is that? What does that mean? What are you doing? Ugh, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, anyway, Keith Lee versus Miz and Morris in the handicap match. Why? Who knows? Uh, Keith Lee getting a lot of love when they're commentating, so maybe him going to the performance center was not really a, a thing. And well, yeah, Keith Lee showed his strength, but Miz and Morrison's teamwork was too much for him, and he picks up the victory. Uh, the Mr. Morrison picked up the victory. It wasn't really much to say. It's a handicap match. I haven't seen any good handicap matches. It just, I'm like, what's the point of seeing uh, Keith Lee lose? I mean, he had a, such a strong start, but him losing and him staring menacingly to uh, Miz and Morrison. What's he going to do, flip another coin at him? Come on now, man. This is the dude who stole down Brown Strowman. Have him be like that badass. Have him be that that dude he could be cool with, but just lays everyone out. It's not that hard. I don't get why WWE can't do that. Then we get a Bray Wyatt segment. It's a uh, Firefly field trip with everyone. All the uh, you know you have Rambling Rabbit, uh, the 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 pig, and you got uh, Mercy the Buzzard. All that they were right there laughing at him and his terrible jokes, which you know, eh, fine. It, it was fun with Bray you know, talk about it, and, you know, but overall, overall, it was a pretty decent promo, uh, Randy comes in, another good promo as well, saying he wants to play a game with, uh, Bray, and he wants to play a little bit of hide and seek, and that's where the segment ends, and I like the fact that, uh, you know, um, <laughs> uh, gosh, I, you know, I like the fact that, one, uh, Brian Saxon, it just looks so creeped out by the puppets, I said that on Twitter, and I'll say it again. He's going to be kidnapped by uh, Wyatt uh, or something. 
or whatever. He finds himself in a firefight front house and he gets turned to a puppet. And no one's going to notice or care when he comes back to the world desk and no one's going to care about his transformation at all. <laughs> uh. And, um... Anyway, we have um, Bray Wyatt uh, talking to people what he was looking for, uh, Randy. At first, he got Riddle and uh, him. And again, Riddle, again, all over the place. Like, he does have these multiple segments. So, WWE is really high. Well, pun intended uh, for Riddle. And him, you know, saying bro, like your bro nouns and such. And then, say, you know, talking to that to uh, the Firefly Funhouse. And then, you know, have Rambling Rabbit actually uh, give an autograph to his pet buddy, which is, well, okay, fine. And then you have uh, Retribution with its terrible, terrible entrance. It's just shaky. Ca can, uh, gosh, why? I don't you know. I feel bad for people who have, who, who are legitimately can't watch stuff because it just makes you not... WWE camera work can make you legitimate nauseous, and and then the strobe lighting. I I don't know what it is. Kevin Dunn needs to stop that stuff, man. It's it's I don't know what it is. So I mean, can someone get a hold of him and just say it, like your your entrances are just most of your entrances are just so disorienting to a point that it turns off your viewers. Ugh. And. Anyway, Rich Ricochet versus Mace and Ali on the microphone, and you know he's saying this corporate. So I'm like, dude, you you basically are the corporate people, man. You 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 you're the broken down version of Antifa, or Vince's version of Antifa, and no one cares about you. Nobody likes you. And then Rick and then Mace and Ricochet. I didn't care for this match. Mace picks up the victory. Ricochet continues to lose against. Um, retribution. In fact, I'm gonna take that win away from him, uh, from Dana Brooke, because let's be honest, that was Dana Brooke who was badass against Retribution, not Ricochet. All right, Ricochet sucks, and honestly, Ricochet's gonna join Retribution because uh, you know, and it's funny. It's 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 real funny how Ricochet didn't want to join the Hurt Business and such. But it looks like he's on drug retribution, the loser stable, and you know the hurt business has gone. Their stock is going up as you have to see Cedric and Selton going for the tag belts. It's like, yeah. <laughs> oh man, it's hilarious. Oh gosh. <sighs> then next up, we got, um, I believe, more. Uh, stuff, uh, uh, more, uh, backstage stuff for, uh, R-Truth and, uh, you know, R-Truth and, uh, I think we talked to that, uh, uh, yeah, I think Hus the Husky the Pig or whatever. He talked to him like, you know, that's why I got P PS6 because the PS5 is sold out. I love Truth. Always have, always will. And meanwhile, uh, Bray walks in and says, um, uh, Oh, uh, you know, it's like you sign right, like, like, bro, there you go, Husky, there you are, and he, and he's like, oh, yeah, man, like, you can't talk to strangers. That's true, aren't you? Yeah, you gotta listen to your dad, <laughs> and he's like, what? And they're like, oh, what? Uh, you know, they all like, uh, he's a dad, and then Bray just like, uh, I gotta look for Randy. See you later. <laughs> oh gosh, now, now the fan fix are gonna go all over the place at this point. Yeah, um, Bray is Husky the pig's dad. Why not at this point? Sure. And then, after that, then after that segment, you have Mandy Rose. Oh, wait a second. Blazer. Oh, did I talk about that? Oh, so, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Sonya uh, uh, Blazer versus Dana Brooke. Uh, Dana Brooke, um, you know, they, were, they had a decent match, and Dana Brooke uh, was, uh, uh, Nia Jax came in, cost a match. They were going to beat her down. And then Mandy Rose returns with a kendo stick and just beat the crap out of, uh, both uh, Blazer and Nijax and just bam, bam, hitting everybody. And then they get like, uh, she gets a little bit overpowered um, over um, uh, you know, with a Blazer. But then Asuka comes back, takes them both out. And well, I think 
I want to say Dana Brooke gets the shot. I would love her getting the shot, but Mandy Rose really wants to get so. I'm betting Mandy Rose is going to replace Lana uh, for the for the match with TLC. Then, well, we finally get our conclusion for this Randy Orton hide and seek, uh, you know, uh, thing. As Randy beats up Bray Wyatt with his rocking chair from well, his Bray Wyatt stuff. It looks like Bray was preparing for it as it's assault. And beats him down and puts him into a box. And if, I, and if they would have put, like, the yeah, send to OVW, I would have howled at the moon. I'm like, <laughs> uh, that would have been great. Just just do that. Send Bray Wyatt back to the developmental. I would have howled. But no, he does the next best thing. He just lights the, he lights the, he lights it on fire. And, and, well, you know, it's reminding what he did to um, Sister Abigail. He burned it up. Yeah, yeah. He, and then, well, the Fiend didn't like that as Fiend pops in and lays out Randy Orton once again. And he's like, oh, you feel, and he's like, let me in at the end of it. I'm like, you should have closed with that as it just seems like the show really, they went too much to a high point. And, as it did, because you had MVP versus Riddle afterwards, and I'm like, and Riddle wins, and I'm just sit there, and I'm like, in a short match, and it looks like they're gonna try to, I don't know, I wouldn't be surprised if it's gonna be Jeff Hardy, Matt Riddle versus uh, Lashley and MVP for like uh, for TLC or something, you know, just an impromptu match, the Riddle Bros debut. Then we have AJ and Drew ending the show with the ascension of the WWE Championship. And honestly, good promos by both um, both dudes and saying AJ's like, I, you know, you, he said you take you 19 years, 19 years to um, get to this moment uh, and such. Because look at you, you're great. It's like it took you so long to get to the WWE Champion. And it's like, and he said that it takes, and it's like, wow, you... You finally got to it, then you lost to Randy Orton, and, and you got it back, but you just seem to be a person that just seems to not really know when the pressure's on. Drew, you just can't, you know, you can't close off the deal. And AJ says he has defended the TLC, he has won, uh, he, ha he has held the WWE Championship, and won a, uh, a TLC match while he was WWE Champion, and he just says that Drew won't, will fail at this, he will fail, because he can't take the pressure. Drew says, yeah, you know what? I like to challenge something that it's it's hard to go to the mountain, but it's harder to retain to the mountain. And you know, he he doesn't like say I'd take that big credit, but he says he's now focused and he's going to prove not only to himself, but prove to everybody that he can win and retain his championship. And it's just like, oh, well, the, by the way, I like the fact they have special music for this while the WWE Championship is being ascended. And he's like, oh, well, AJ's like, you think you're fighting me, but it's not just me you're fighting. And then Miz and Morris is so up, and they jump Drew. But, well, you know, Miz and Morrison get taken out by Drew McIntyre with, like, uh, two Claymores, one with Morrison with Claymore with the ladder on him. And then AJ Styles, thanks to his help with his, um, his vodka, almost, you know, he tosses the still steps into the ring, distracts him, and then, bam, AJ just takes advantage for it. Lays him out, beats him down, and stands tall. And it looks like you know, and it looks like AJ Styles has that momentum going to TLC. And will Drew? Well, will Drew crack under the pressure again? Well, we'll find out when TLC tables, ladders, and chairs this Sunday. Well, honestly, I enjoyed this show. I you know, I would have enjoyed it a lot more if that last segment with Bray Wyatt and and Randy Orton was the um uh, the ending shot. I think that would have been a lot better. I think it would have been a better closer. But this was fine as well. But honestly, I I lean more Randy Orton and Bray at this point because again, Fiend is that type of character that you need to show. You know that type of uh yeah, maybe they didn't want to end on a Fiend twice. And, and such, but yeah, I understand. You want to make your championship mean important. You wanted to close the show because your champion is the top of the brand and such. 
But I think in this situation, uh, with what uh, the actions Randy Orton did, I think him lighting the thing on fire, uh, the box on fire, and trying to destroy the fiend, um, you know, would have been better if they actually ended the show with something like that, with with, with that type of segment. Uh, but yeah, overall, I enjoyed this Monday Night Raw and a nicest game go home show. And you know what? And writing this down actually felt like a lot. You know, I think this thing came off a lot clearer. <laughs> All right. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for watching being here. This is Duke CT. Peace and love. See y'all when I see y'all later. <laughs>